Good afternoon. I realize it's April and 2015 hasn't been the most spectacular with films so far, but it's only April. Let's... we still got eight months of the year left, right? Yeah! So here's a list of ten movies that I think will probably be really good, and I'll be kind of sad if they aren't. I got one for games coming too. Here's some of the bigger movies that I'm not overly interested in that I realize will probably make a lot of money. I will see these. I, you, you will have reviews for these four movies, but I... Granted, I'm going in skeptical. Ant-Man. Marvel, really? A trailer for a trailer? A trailer for a trailer. They released a trailer that... Marvel seems to think that they can put out whatever they want and we'll go see it. It's like, this movie looks terrible. Ant-Man. Like, please comment. Is anyone excited for Ant-Man? I mean, like... I feel obligated to see it because it's a Marvel movie and I really don't like that. Mad Max. Mad Max actually looks pretty good, but it didn't quite make the list. Mad Max looks like one super long car chase fight scene. And actually, I think Mad Max would be pretty good. Same director as the last few, so that could be fun. Jurassic World. I don't see this being any different than just a remake of Jurassic Park 1. It's like, oh, park's open, people go, bad stuff starts happening, dinosaurs start eating people. I mean, how many different directions could this movie possibly go? Uh, if we see some cool CGI dinosaur monsters, hey, I guess that'd be enough. Fantastic. This trailer also... This movie looks like it's going to be well made enough, but I just I don't think it's going to do anything over the top, like, cool. Like, I'm not excited for Fantastic Four. I'm just not. And here's some of the other ones that I am more, more excited for, but still didn't quite make the list. Spectre, new James Bond movie. Actually, this one has Christoph Waltz in it, so that, that could be really awesome. But I wasn't the biggest fan of Skyfall. I think Skyfall's really overrated. I don't think it's that good of a movie. I think the villain was terrible, but Christoph Waltz it will be a solid villain. All we need is some cool James Bondy stuff. Make it dark, make it gritty, make it good. In the Heart of the Sea has got Thor, directed by somebody famous as a Dan or a... Thor fights Moby Dick on a boat, that could be fun. Walk, new Robert Zemeckis movie. Robert Zemeckis made Forrest Gump, Bale, Back to the Future. And then Steven Spielberg's got a new movie coming. I think they changed, it was St. James Place before, now it's called Bridge of Spies. It's like a cold movie, it's got Tom Hanks in it. Like, this could be really... Really good. And of course, there's plenty of Oscar dramas that'll release later in the year that I just don't know about now because they're, I don't have a lot of press riding them yet. But here we go, number 10. Mission Impossible 5. Tom Cruise is one of my favorite action heroes. Oblivion, Edge of Tomorrow, the last Mission Impossible. Tom Cruise is really fun to watch. He's really good with his action role. A trailer when he's just hanging on the side of a plane, he's looking like... Uh. Ghost Protocol was really, really good. All they gotta do is step it up. They could even match Ghost Protocol, I'll be happy. Number nine. Number nine is Joy. This is the new movie by David O. Russell. David O. Russell did American Hustle, Silver Linings Playbook, and The Fighter. Those are all really good, really well acted movies. And this one's got Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence in. I don't even remember what it's about, but I will definitely see it. Number eight. Number eight is The Martian. This is a new space movie directed by Ridley Scott. Matt Damon is in it, Jessica Chastain is in it. It's like, huh. This could be interstellar too. So apparently Matt Damon's like trapped on Mars and some kind of cool stuff. I don't, if I get a cool CGI space movie with good music, I'll be happy. This would be higher up on the list if not for the poo fest that Exodus was that Ridley Scott released last year. But he, I got a lot on one dud. I'll give him another chance. Number seven, Ex Machina. This was supposed to come out last Friday. I'm looking at the IMDb dates and I'm like, oh, I hate limited releases so much. It's like, if you're gonna stagger the movie, if you're gonna wide release it anyway, what's the point of a limited release? It comes out on April 24th, so this will be very soon. But now it's like, once I do see it, not as many people are gonna watch the review because it's already been out in other places. But it's got Oscar Isaac in it. Oscar Isaac is awesome. He's one of my favorite actors. It looks like it could be this really, really good sci-fi, like, smart, mature movie about, like, this AI robot. And if it has cool Christopher Nolan-y style visual effects and music that's... I could really see myself loving this movie. Number six. Six is a new horror movie directed by Guillermo del Toro called Crimson Peak. This has got Tom Hiddleston in it. That's Loki. This could be really good. Guillermo del Toro previously did Pacific Rim and Pan's Labyrinth and a few other movies. Pacific Rim had really great action scenes, but it was really, really stupid. And there were a lot of aspects that just did not make sense in that movie. But you're like, hey, it's a mindless action movie. I'm like, fair enough. It could have been a mindful action movie, but... Pacific Rim was a little too childish for me. Crimson Pig looks like it could be this really messed up, good creature designed like creative thinking horror. Like this house and it's like, gonna eat everybody. Number five. Number five is called The Revenant. This is a western directed by Alejandro Gonzalez Inarritu for Birdman last year. And it stars 
Tom Hardy and Leonardo DiCaprio. Now we're getting to the high hundred millions, maybe even billion dollar movies up here. The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2. It'd be nice to finally get some closure on this, this story arc in this world. The Hunger Games have done some really good things with these movies. I think they're pretty well directed. They have some really emotional touching moments, but I gotta admit, I don't care about their love triangle at all. So all I have to do is focus on that as little as possible and give us some really cool just... This is it, like Harry Potter Deathly Hallows Part 2, like action, epic scale type deal. Sometimes you gotta wonder if I even grasp the language. You can tell I've given up when I just say type deal, ism nation, age deal, whatever. Number three, this is the first big one of the year, and this is coming up soon. Marvel's The Avengers Age of Ultron. How are my glasses getting smudgy? I'm not even touching them. Oh my god. Really? Avengers 1 was pretty awesome. It did something superhero movies just haven't done before. It brought the main characters from all these other superhero movies and made them an ensemble cast in one. And it broke records. I mean, I'm excited for Avengers because it's Avengers, but one of the fears I have is that it'll just be a better version of Avengers 1. They're not really getting along. Thor's trying to fit his hands around Iron Man's neck. And then there's a villain who has a connection to one of the characters, and he makes war on Earth, except, except instead of Loki, it's Ultron, and instead of Chitauri, it's Ultron drones. Shit. Had a couple script and writing issues with the Avengers, but hey, I have faith in Joss Whedon. I think we'll make a really, really kick-ass summer blockbuster movie, which may very well Crack two billion dollars. All the Marvel movies have been raking in cash. Number two, Star Wars. When was the last time we had an actual Star Wars movie? This is gonna be huge. I'm not the hugest Star Wars fan in the world. However, this new movie looks awesome. And Darth Vader is awesome. Darth Vader is so cool. Directed by J.J. Abrams, he did the last two Star Treks. Andy Serkis is gonna be in this. Andy Serkis is gonna be in Avengers too. Harrison Ford's coming back, Mark Hamill's coming back, Carrie Fan, who cares about Carrie Fisher? The beginning of this movie is gonna be, like, really just... I can feel I'm, like, letting people appreciate just stepping back into this world again. And unless this is a complete piece of crap, Star Wars will definitely beat Avengers at the box office. Excited for awesome broadsword lightsaber fighting. I mean, it's Star Wars. It's Star Wars. Number one! I know what you're thinking. What's... what's what could be Star Wars, right? Maybe something called The Hateful Eight, Quentin Tarantino. If you aren't excited for this movie, you should be. If you hadn't seen Django Unchained and Glorious Bastards or Pulp Fiction, you should've. What Tarantino movies tend to do is have really tense, drawn-out, long sequences of very well-written, well-acted dialogue, and then they will suddenly explode into violence. It's the most brutal, graphic violence you'll find in a movie. So what happens with Hateful Eight is there are these eight bounty hunters and they get trapped in a tavern, like, during a blizzard together. Samuel Jackson was talking about this on Jimmy Fallon, he's like, I don't like you, I don't like you, I don't like you, and they're all stuck together and they've all got guns. Like, if this turns into Django Unchained, plus and then there were none, I will be the eighth happiest man on the planet. Eight. So there's your rundown of the movies you should be looking out for in the rest of 2015. If you're excited for Hitman, you're not quite beyond saving, but thank you for watching. I'm Wesley Tomsky. Like, share, subscribe, and comment, and good luck with whatever you're doing right now. As long as it's legal. I'm playing Bloodborne right now, so I'll have a review of that when I beat it. So far, it's pretty great.